everybody, welcome back. My next guest tonight is an actor you know from The Walking Dead, Okja, and Burning. His latest film is Minari. David, we got this stupid stick, so so, how did you get it? I bought it. I bought it. Please welcome to A Late Show, Stephen Yun. Hey, Stephen, thanks for being here. Hey, Stephen, thank you for having me. This is so cool. Well, one of the... Well, there's something that we have in common, besides our names, obviously, Stephen, is the people out there, I'm, I guess a lot of people have no idea of, is that you and I both worked at the Second City in Chicago. You were in the National Touring Company, right? Yeah, I got, I got a brief sin at the Touring Company. It was awesome. Did you... I, I got did to look at... Your, uh, I got to look at your image quite a bit. <laughs> you lucky, you lucky man. I mean, a lot of people um, do comedy and they end up doing nothing else with their careers. But how has improv or improv comedy even helped you as a dramatic actor? You know, um, improv is improv is such a great foundation. Um, I think you know the tenets of staying present, listening. Um, being spontaneous, uh, those are all really great first tools to kind of lay the groundwork for me. And then, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not that different than dramatic acting. It's just, you just don't have to, you know, dramatic acting, you just don't have to be witty and funny the whole time. That, that, so it takes a whole section of the thing off. So and they, nice. somebody gives you lines. Yeah, and they tell you what to say. So that's also easier. Well, you've been you've been acting a long time. I gotta. I don't know if you can see this photograph. This is you in kindergarten, right there. Were you acting even at that age? You know what? Looking back, um, I probably I probably was. I just that that image is of me landing in Regina, Saskatchewan, uh, in my first year of school in America in the West, and. Um, I I I pretty I probably probably went inward from that point on. Not to, not to be sad about it, but yeah, I think I started, you know, that was mask work starting there. <laughs> well, because did you did you have English at this age? No, I had no English. Um, my parents told me the first English words I learned were uh, "Don't cry." Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh, because so many people said it to you. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> How do you say "Don't cry" in Korean? Uljima. Well, I need to hear that right now. Just thinking of this yeah. child being told not to cry. Well, what was you know? Were you were you? When did you say to yourself, "Okay, I wanna I wanna do this as I wanna be a performer. I wanna make this my life." <laughs> You know, I went to college. I went to college at Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo College, and um, uh, I got to see my improv troupe, the, the improv troupe at my school called Monkapult, that actually Jordan Klepper was a part of. Oh wow! And um, uh, he wasn't there, unfortunately, when I went there. Um, but I, I kind of gravitated towards it. I loved the freedom. I loved the performance. And honestly, it was. I think it was just like. Oh, you can be anything you want to be up there at any given time, and people will laugh if, if you're funny. And so I like the challenge of that, I guess. Well, the new film, uh, Minari, is about a... Uh, it's a Korean-American family that moves to Arkansas in pursuit of uh, their dream. What, what does the word Minari mean? What's the significance of that? Uh, Minari, uh, and pronounce uh, how we how Koreans would pronounce it Minari. Um, it's it's um, it's a plant. It's a plant that, um, in this very profound way, Isaac uh, Isaac, our director Lee Isaac Chung, uh, he has this great story about how his grandmother planted it when she came over to join their family in their farm, and um, it it dies in the first year, and then it thrives in the second, so you harvest the second growing, and it actually purifies the water and the soil around it. And um, he told me that in all the years that his dad tried to do all these different types of crops, the thing that 
grew the best was his grandmother's Minari, and that was not really, you know, they didn't have to, like, keep after it. Just did it on its own. We're going to take a quick break, but stick around. We'll be right back with more Stephen Young. 